Wow, quite a few people have signed up already. Yeah, yeah. They are waiting for your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. I should probably have cleaned up my bookshelf. Yeah. How many? There are so many books out there. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the overflow. overflow. We have two, two big wooden bookshelves in the, uh, the lounge and anything that wouldn't fit there comes in here. It's a man of knowledge. <laughs> Very fond of books. I've uh, developed a hobby in historic architecture. So this one arrived last week. So very nice. It's the world the building, building of the, the cave. cave. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> Lovely. I've only started digesting that one. Okay. That books are bioinformatics books, huh? I don't actually have my well when I when I buy books on bioinformatics that go to the office bookshelf. Okay, okay. Um because the, the students there can benefit from them. Uh, oh. so the books that I have here are generally ones associated with my hobby. Oh. Mm. But my wife is an historian, so she has a, a pile of them there. You are a photographer also. <laughs> I do love photography. I love your photography. I have your photo till now. Right? It's true. Who is your wife? Wife and in the next room. Okay. She uh, was kind enough to make me a, a nice, a fresh, fresh, fresh cup of tea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> What was the, the total enrollment for today? What, what? Uh, how many students enrolled to watch today? 100, 100. Wow, that's great. <laughs> they are ready to see you. There is no chance if they, the more our number nine, we will do it. It's only <laughs> right. 100 is the maximum. Otherwise, you will arrange more than 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good that you have a password for this session. We'll see how that goes. I've been part of a few meetings that got blown up, so that's um, that's not pleasant. They are anticipating more from you. Participants. <laughs> 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 I love that some of the folks are joining from bed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice way to attend a seminar. It's a good seminar. Okay, even it's like uh, watching the match, cricket match. Eh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, somebody is uh, sharing their screen from their phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yar bad. Seminar going on. Yes, it is. Uh, Storage space running out. How to use the Zoom? This for students, for UG students. <laughs> they don't know. They are trying. How to use the Zoom? That's a. Uh, yeah. My department has uh, invested. Well, my my university has invested in um, Microsoft Teams software. So almost all of our departmental meetings, almost all of our teaching takes place through Microsoft Teams now. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Share screen. Okay, yeah, somebody else is sharing their screen, so I can't share my slides right now, but uh, they'll, they'll realize that in a moment, I'm sure. There's so many participants are there. <laughs> It's weird watching myself as I'm watching myself. <laughs> Enjoy. You are looking handsome. Thank you. <laughs> I wore something other than a polo shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get more uh, followers. Uh, I'm going to grab the screen while it's free. Okay. Some of them take two of you. <laughs> What's that? Some of them will take selfie of you. <laughs> Sorry? Trimula? Yeah. Don't take them on. Just wait, wait. 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 Is the group chat turned off for group messages? Yeah, group message available. Yeah, you can chat. I, I see that if I write, it goes to inspiring millions, but not to the, the whole group. The lower side, there is a chart will be there. It's sick. Chart, participants. If you click the participants, yeah, the chart will be there. Right. In the lower side, there is a chart will be there. You can chat. Yes, um, it looks like that message goes only to our our moderator to inspiring millions. I wanted it to be possible for the students to write in questions so that I can see them pop up on the chat panel as I talk. Okay, uh, okay. You can see the in chat. Okay, they will type in chat. They will send it a screen. You will answer the question. Okay. Money. Can we start our session? Hello. Start with the Yeah. Now I, I am Dr. Tumulan from Anai College of Arts and Science. Good morning, dear friends. Take immense pleasure. My warm welcome to our college principal, Dr. S. P. Monica Vasagi, Vice Principal's Convener, Dr. P. Mani, all faculties of our institution, and dear participants from various institutions to this online seminar. Seminar, what does this gene do? Bioinformatics for function. My heartfelt thanks to our principal for her valuable support to make the webinar possible today. On behalf of Anna College of Arts and Science, I express my heartfelt greetings and warm welcome to our honorable chief guest, Dr. David E. Dab, Professor, Division of Molecular Biology and Human Genetics, Stellenbosch University. Faculty of Medicine and Health Science, South Africa. Welcome you, sir. Once again, welcome you all. I hope this webinar will be grand success. Thank you. Now, I request our convener, Dr. P. Mani, introduce our chief guest, 
Dr. David Tam Professor. Good morning to all. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the international webinar on what does genes do. So it's hosted by School of Bioscience, Anne College of Arts and Science, Kumbakona. I am Dr. Mani, working as a director, School of Bioscience, Anne College of Arts and Science, Kumbakona. Uh, it's uh, I am excited to host this session today. It's a leader one who knows the way, shows the way, walks the way. I am going to uh, introduce a good leader. It's my honor and privilege and pleasure to introduce our speaker, Professor Dr. David T. Lamb from uh, Stanbridge University, Faculty of Medicine, Health Science, and South Africa. He has completed uh, his previous at the University of Washington. He's a fascinating individual, holding various member of position in prestigious professional organization. He received awards and honors for his outstanding research contribution. He is actively involved in teaching and research supervision in University of Stonebridge and uh, University of Manchester, University of Malvi, University of Pretoria. He published around 104 peer reviewed articles in high impact journals. He also undertaking so many international research projects under the domain of bioinformatics and biotechnology. Uh, he is a very good person. He is a good knowledge person in uh, bioinformatics. He is trying medicine for COVID also. He is a nominee for a Nobel Prize also. With this brief introduction, uh, so I cold heartily I welcome our uh, staffs and members and students. And uh, on behalf of School of Science, I welcome you all. So before entering the session, I request all participants to mute your audios to avoid interruption. If you have any queries, and please comment on chat box. Uh, presenters will answer the answer your question during that uh, chat section. Thank you. I hand over the session to Dr. Tab. Please connect to Dr. Tab. There, I think we're back live again. I uh, yeah. muted so I could cough, and then when I tried to unmute, <laughs> not my microphone. Yeah, you. No, <laughs> I will go ahead to put the slides up front. Um, are all, could students give me a good nod if you're able to see the slides? Just a yeah, big yes or no? It's clear, it's clear. No ah, perfect, good news, good news. Okay. Um, well, I, I thought that it would be really worthwhile to talk about kind of this tenuous relationship between um, gene sequences and gene phenotype. Um, I, I spend a bit of my time working in non-model organisms. And when we do that, we very frequently have sequences, but may not have a good understanding of what those sequences represent in terms of functionality. So today's talk is, is one that I would speak, uh, that I would describe as, as wet and dry, in that there are a lot of bench technologies we can use to assign function to a gene. Um, but we have an increasingly, increasingly quite a lot of information we can use bioinformatically to, uh, to infer a function for a sequence. Um, for those who aren't familiar with Stellenbosch, I would just say that uh, uh, if you ever visit uh, South Africa, you're likely to fly into Johannesburg, which is kind of in the north center of the country. Um, but Cape Town is down on the um, down on the southwest corner, essentially, of the country. So we're very, very close to where the Atlantic and Indian Oceans meet. Okay, um, I will go ahead and move us to uh, the next slide, and we'll try to think about where we, where we sit with this question. What does this gene do? So I'm going to start. Did I hear a question? I think it was just a hiss from a, a microphone. It's okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I'm going to start with the question, have I ever seen a similar sequence? If you have a, a new protein sequence, obviously if you have a sequence that has a high degree of sequence homology associated with it, um, it, it may be that a protein to which this one is similar has a known function. So we can impute that the function of the one to which this is similar is also the function of the sequence we have. Um, but frequently, we find ourselves in a position where we don't really know uh, whether uh, we, we don't have a, a, an exemplar in the sequence databases. We don't have a gene that's like it. And for that, we may need to settle for this gene and another gene for which we do know function show up and go away under the same circumstances. 
therefore we can we can claim that via um, via the times when this is most heavily expressed, we can discern what its function is. But of course, a lot of a lot of genes do not function in a vacuum. They they function in collaboration with others, and when we want to understand protein protein interactions, um, we're frequently going to need some bench experiments to help us understand what the what the partners of a gene would be. So uh, through the course of today, we're going to talk about each of these three aspects that we can uh, attack for a given gene sequence. Uh, I believe I believe Prof Mani wanted me to run. Uh, around 30 minutes. This might run more like 40, but uh, I want to make sure we leave lots of room for questions. And if you have questions um, on the way, I would suggest you go ahead to write those in on the chat panel because um, I, I don't want to just move ahead blindly and leave people completely lost with a slide. Okay. Um, I would start with the fact that a lot of people are getting novel sequences this day, uh, these days, um, not from proteomics and sometimes from genomics, but more frequently from RNA-seq. RNA-seq is, uh, is really powerful for uncovering novel sequences because you know that the, the transcripts that you see represent a processed form of the gene that already has all of the introns stripped away. Our ability to impute function to in Hello. 